Hola, wherever you are. This is the Good News Roundup. This week's bulletin brings you everything you need to know about the people who won the Nobel Awards. The people who, besides having contributed to significant advancement and progress of humanity, can also give us a lesson in humility and determination. We like the Nobel Prizes because instead of representing daily isolated events, they reward the slow and broader developments that have reshaped the world we live in. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has this morning decided to award the 2022 Nobel Prize in Chemistry in equal shares to Carolyn Bertossi, Morten Meldal, and to Barry Sharpless. They received the prize for the development of click chemistry and bioorthogonal chemistry. Click chemistry, coined in the 2000s, is partly explained by its name. It's basically snapping molecules together. They say, imagine that you could attach small chemical buckles to different types of building blocks. Then imagine you could link these buckles together and produce molecules of greater complexity and variation. That's click chemistry. The other half moon of the chemistry Nobel, the field of bioorthogonal chemistry, it's still in its early phases. You can take these really complex molecules and do precision chemistry on them with these reactions. And that is a superpower that opens the door to all kinds of interesting applications. And in, in our lab, the applications are in biomedicine. And we use these chemistries to study biological molecules in cells, in, in living organisms, and also to develop new kinds of medicines for diseases like cancer. Because the Nobel Academy is in Northern Europe and the winners are announced in the morning time, the Lurids on the western side of the world are usually brought up from their sleep with the incredible news. It took a, a few minutes for me to comprehend that it wasn't some hallucination or strange dream. You know, that, um, and if, in fact, it was the chair of the Nobel. Morten Maudal, who won the award jointly with Caroline Bertozzi and Barry Sharpless, received the call from the Nobel panel just about half an hour before the public announcement. No, I did not expect it at all. It was actually a complete surprise. Maudal's hope is that the award will help to argue for young people to take chemistry as a discipline. Yeah, I think it's very important that we get more young people to choose chemistry, which is a little bit difficult at the moment because chemistry is the solution to many of our challenges. Barry Sharpless, the third recipient of the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, just wanted to create a chemistry that worked in hours instead of days. I've always been impatient. I like to go in the lab, mix up some things that work, and I go on from there. If I have to wait a day or two, I just can't. That's not good. So I'm trying to create a chemistry that moves in hours instead of days. But prizes aren't what I'm doing science for, for, uh, for better or for worse. So I have to do it. It's kind of a compulsion. It's kind of a risk-taking operation. And I like to find an area where the ideas can be uh, can lead you into something more dramatic. The 2022 Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded to Svante Pevo, a Swedish scientist for his discoveries on human evolution. He uncovered the DNA of Neanderthals and proved that our ancestors had children with them. What we do is to look for the genetic material for DNA from people who have lived here long before us and try to see how they are related to us and how they are related to other forms of humans that were also here, such as Neanderthals. He retrieved genetic material from 40,000-year-old bones producing a complete Neanderthal genome and initiating the field of ancient DNA studies. His research has also provided key insights into our immune system and what makes us unique compared with our extinct cousins. We have discovered, for example, that in the COVID pandemic, the greatest risk factor to become severely ill and even die when you're infected with the virus has come over to modern people from Neanderthals. The 2022 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded in equal shares to the pioneers of quantum communication, Alain Aspe, John Clauser, and Anton Sillinger. 
The Lorit celebrates their work in quantum information science and their discoveries on the way that unseen particles, such as tiny bits of matter, can be linked or entangled with each other even when they are separated by large distances. Clauser developed quantum theories first put forward in the 1960s into a practical experiment. Aspe was able to close the loophole in those theories and Salinger demonstrated a phenomenon called quantum teleportation that effectively allows information to be transmitted over distances. When I was uh, originally proposed doing the experiment and actually was doing it, uh, everybody told me I was nuts, uh, that I would ruin my career, everybody knew what the result would be, uh, wasting time and money, uh, wasting my career. Uh, but I was, I was having fun doing uh, some really challenging experimental physics. Can we pause for a sec? Salinger, who is based at the University of Vienna, said he was grateful to you, Austrian and European taxpayers, as you have enabled him to pursue his work regardless of the possible benefits it might have. Bei den ersten Experimenten wurde ich manchmal gefragt von, auch von der Presse, wozu das Ganze gut sein soll. Und ich habe gesagt, ich kann Ihnen ganz stolz sagen, das ist für nichts gut. Das mache ich nur aus Neugierde, weil ich von der Quantenphysik von Anfang an, wo ich zum ersten Mal davon gehört habe, vollkommen begeistert war. Wegen der mathematischen Schönheit dieser Beschreibung. Sur le coup des 11 heures, un petit message de mon assistante qui me dit Y a quelqu'un à Stockholm qui cherche vous avoir, est-ce que je peux lui donner votre numéro de portable <laughs> J'ai dit oui. <laughs> There is still a lot of mysteries, of strange and things. Uh, to discover in the quantum. It shows that the quantum is still alive. Because, because of course, this uh, uh, prize today, in my opinion, is anticipating one that will be one day on quantum technologies. The highest literary prize went to French author Annie Ernaud. She is the first female French Nobel literature winner and just the 17th woman among the 119 Nobel Literature Laureates. Annie Arnaud's writing is subordinated throughout to the process of time, the years. It is a most ambitious project and has been called the first collective autobiography. It won her an international reputation and a raft of followers and literary disciples. I consider that it is a great chance d'avoir pu le réaliser. Euh, le Nobel euh, n'a pas encore beaucoup de réalité pour moi, je dois le dire, mais euh, je sens, euh, c'est vrai que je sens une responsabilité nouvelle. Je veux dire, je, je lutterai jusqu'à mon dernier souffle pour que les femmes euh, puissent choisir d'être mère ou de ne pas l'être. C'est un droit fondamental. The Peace Prize, considered the most expansive in its recognition, awarded to those who have conferred the greatest benefit to humankind, was given to Ales Bialyatsky, a Belarusian human rights defender, to the Russian Human Rights Organization Memorial, and to the Ukrainian Human Rights Center for Civil Liberties, which has worked to document Russian war crimes against Ukrainian civilians. <laughs> принижені так, щоб це не відчув весь світ. Бо це як рівень води. Якщо він впав десь рано чи пізно, він впаде і в нас. Алес Пяліацкі is currently in prison, but his recognition was nonetheless applauded. I really uh, honored and delighted this this award was given to Alex Bialyatsky. He is a wonderful person and since uh, 1995, you know, he established the Human Rights Defendant Center Visna in Belarus. He many times uh, was in prisons for his views, for his um, uh, intention, you know, to protect people and human rights in our country. And of course, he deserves to be the winner of Peaceful Prize. The third laureate of the award was the Russian group Memorial Human Rights Defense Center. This for us, uh, this is um, a sign that our work, uh, whether it is uh, 
recognized by our uh, by Russian authorities or not. It is important. It is important for the world. It is important for people in Russia. I think there is a very strong uh, message saying that civil society, both organizations and individuals, should claim their rights and should stand up against authoritarianism and protest against war. And that's all from this special edition of the Good News Roundup. If you felt inspired by these extraordinary and passionate people, share this episode with your friends. And remember, it can be hard to find among the headlines, but some news can be good news.